going to um, express our appreciation for Fran for him to um, bring his work to Ithaca and share his stories with us. We're really excited to be able to showcase his work here at CSMA. I know Fran from Finger Lakes Community College and I know he does a lot of work um, exhibiting other people's artwork and so it's such a, a privilege to be able to allow him to show his own work in a different space other than the one he usually works in. Mm. So it is my privilege to welcome Burko to the front. <laughs> I was going to say to the stage. Awesome. But... Awesome. Uh, hi friends. Um, I just want to say thank you to Finger Lakes Community College because They've been amazing to me. I wouldn't be here, like, all of the, I work for them now, like, they put time, money, resources into me, and I'm really grateful for that, and I also want to thank uh, the Community School of Music and Arts uh, for letting me display all of my artwork. Um, it was such a, such an awesome task to print everything and frame everything, it takes forever, and you have to reformat the sizes and stuff like that. So it gets really complicated sometimes and uh, just feels like you're never going to end. But uh, here I am. Um, and so I just want to, um, I just have like four points um, about my artwork uh, that I want to express. And um, one of them is just like explaining a little bit of like how my brain works. And I think that, um, that comes from my mother and my grandma. Um, such a, they're like kind of like opposite spectrum. So like my mom uh, was pretty liberal and she went through a lot. And so part of her journey, I was really young. So um, that actually basically in my formative years like that, I believe that that shapes your brain. And so I had different experiences with my mom that I, that a lot of people would like say, oh, that's awful and stuff like that. But I think it's all part of the journey. And my grandma on the opposite side, um, she was very strict. So she would make me read every morning and she was a history teacher. so. Uh, before going to school, I had to read and then eat breakfast and then go to school and then come back from school and do like more like um, school work and then I could get to play. So it was like a military style of like discipline with my grandma. But with my mom, what's the opposite? So what I got was like this really weird mixture of both worlds and um, my mom, um, I, uh, I don't really know honestly like how like I got into thinking like about spiritual stuff but I just remember being really little and I'm not throwing my mom under the bus or anything but she <coughs> would go to work and she would lock me in the apartment when I was an infant and so that she would go six to eight hours to work and then she would come back after her shift and I was like probably like three four so I was really young so I don't know if it's because I was like raised in a Catholic family or I seriously don't know but I like this is one of my first memories like I just remember like being really young and probably four and like I heard this thought in my mind that I was really scared and I was alone locked inside my house and I heard this thought that said the devil is in here and get out of this house and I don't know what to make of it honestly I was really young that's like that's all I can remember and I just remember being really scared and I actually figured out a way to go to the back door of the patio and I climbed over this fence and I went outside. So when my mom came back home, she found me outside and she was like really scared. Like what? Like she was like making sure that I was okay and everything. And like, I just remember like, since I was really little, just 
thinking of these matters and like that has never left me like and that's like part of my art like it's just like this weird part of my brain where I like don't know how to explain many situations so I try to explain it with my artwork and then like my grandma saw all of this happening in my life so she was like oh no you're not like let me let me take care of that child for you so then my grandma took over and then I went into military style of learning <laughs> like history and like all this kind of stuff so I was just watching a uh, YouTube video of this guy who goes by Everyday Spy and he was a CIA agent and he teaches you how to be a spy and just in like a normal day so you can like get ahead of people or like <coughs> just like stuff that you can do to recognize patterns in the psychology of people so that you can use it for your favor so I was like oh that sounds really interesting so I I was listening to that because I do that I listen to like a lot of podcasts or watch a lot of movies while I'm drawing like this kind of stuff takes like 22 hours to draw like architectural like rendering so like while I'm drawing it's really for me it's like therapy I just go line by line and then I'm listening to what they're saying anyway long story short this guy from the CIA said if you want a super smart person or a super uh, yeah basically like someone you can train to be like really intelligent like you have to break him as a child and then put him into like this really regimented style of training and they're gonna learn so fast and they're gonna be like faster than everyone <laughs> and I was thinking like hold up a second like I think that's what happened to me like I was broken really really young and I didn't know what to make of it and then my grandma took over and she put me into this like really intense like discipline and I'm so thankful for everything even though like you know I'm not saying it for you to be like to have pity on me or anything that I'm just like trying to process all of this like I'm talking about my artwork so um, I'm really thankful for my mother because she brought uh, a lot of like the artist side of, like she was also very liberal but also really like she would get hyped with me when I wanted to be a skateboarder she would be like I'll buy you a skateboard I'll buy you shoes and I, I love my mom for that because my dad would be like well uh, you know you have to work the summer or something different and then you can get a skateboard but my mom was always like yeah that sounds really cool and she like bought me my first drum set which is kind of like what got me into art and like uh i mean music is art obviously but what happened was that i was playing drums and then i started playing in a metal band and i moved out of my mom's house because we had a very uh we went through very difficult situations and my mom um had different partners and anyway long story short somebody my mom was dating uh, was providing for all of us uh, I was already in high school and all of that but he was a corrupt lawyer and he was selling houses to people and saying oh I'll sell you this house and, but he didn't own the houses he was just selling houses and, and uh, eventually like somebody shot him in the head and he died and my mom went into like a full like shock moment in that and um, she had to be taken to the mental asylum and I was a teenager and my dad was I was raised my mom and my dad are not together we're not together so I was mostly raised by my mother but at that point I had to go back into my dad's house and I was a teenager that I uh, I just loved playing music and just partying and stuff like that and all of a sudden I was like confronted with reality and 
when I moved to my dad's house, I realized I don't have anything. Like my dad uh, used to um, transfer carpets from LA to San Diego in a truck. He was never home. Um, we didn't have any food in the fridge. Sometimes we didn't have electricity because he wasn't there. So like at that point I was like alone completely. My mom was in this mental asylum. My dad was gone. And that's when I was like, okay, like I have like first you go into panic, you know? And then you're like, oh, I'm all alone. What am I going to do? And then you start starving, and then you're like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And then you start knocking doors and, and try to find a job and stuff. So I got a job at McDonald's, finally, and I was so thankful for that because that actually brought back discipline into my life. And I wanted to keep uh, making music, but I, my friends were in a different town, and so luckily I had this laptop. And I, I think my friend gave me a burnt copy of this software called Fruity Loops. So it's like a music software, like right now people use Pro Tools, Logic, all of that, and Ableton, you've heard many different names, but um, Fruity Loops is actually still around, but um, it's not as popular as other ones. So what I tried to do was like try to transfer, I had a drum set, so I would play a beat and then try to like program it into the computer and like that this is like almost like 20 years ago i think yeah like, like eight, yeah 18 years ago and back in the day like this was not normal you know like now everyone has a computer everyone can make music it's so accessible like you can do it in your room like the microphones are not as expensive so like but back in the day it was like a task to create a piece of music in your computer like, most of them didn't have the memory to actually run the software. So a lot of the times I was just really frustrated with my computer trying to like say, hey, play this C note at 100 BPM, you know, programming music. And then eventually it would just like freeze. And it was so annoying. <laughs> so when I first got my, my first Apple computer, like, it was like amazing because first of all like nobody had a laptop that was so expensive and it was given to me for free by a church so that was like having like a ferrari for me because then i can just program music and it wouldn't freeze and like all that stuff that was really cool and then i like started making music and i saw that my cds were selling here and there with friends and stuff so like I had someone designing all my covers and then I was looking one day at a cover that a friend designed for me and I thought, I think I can do better than that. And so I went to school then for graphic design. Um, I had gone to school previously for music recording. So with all that said, that's what brought me to the Finger Lake Community College. Finger Lakes Community College to do graphics and now that's a little bit about myself now um, I want to talk about um, the, the digital uh, renaissance as I call it kind of a thing so basically like when you are an artist like they most of the schools like right now tell you you have to like be a printmaker or you have to be a um, you have to draw or you have to do oil or you have to be a musician and which is great I think that's a great idea to just like specialize in something and get really good at that I don't have anything against that however some other people like me like we just like to skip around different media because it's just it's just fun I want to learn how to do music I want to learn how to do printmaking I want to design stuff so like my artwork is all over the place. I have some fine arts with drawing, I have photography, I have like digital illustration, digital collaboration, fashion design, music. Um, and it's just because um, I, I think part of the reason is because my heroes are all dead. Like the people that I really look like up to are like Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo and Gustave Doré. Like, 
they're all in the past and they were all doing everything and I this is part of the reason why I ended up doing all of uh, these drawings and photographies because I, I believe and I've heard so many times from people that I admired if you walk in the shoes of people that, that you admire like you're gonna learn something from them so like when you like because I'm a drummer when I want to learn a piece uh, I go to the music that I enjoy you know so it's the same thing when I want to learn like something about the ancient world and all these buildings that are fascinating I go to Vitruvius or Palladio uh, and all these people from Italy and Rome and Egypt I just keep going back to the past because I just think that back in the day people built with more beauty you know they care about like if you go to one of these buildings even like the water fountain is like ordinary with like little birds and like, stuff like that and so beautiful and now we do something we have technology but it's like in the modern world which is great um, but I just enjoy the, the beauty of the past and then with all that said um, let's see um, I guess all over my art you can see Egypt um, it's basically everywhere like all of my art has a little bit of Egypt most of it and I think uh, I just can't get enough of Egypt is when you start reading of the ancient world like if you read Plato like if you go to the Greeks then you start reading about the Greeks and then the Greeks are going to tell you look at the but look at what Egypt was doing and stuff if you go to like Samaria like they point out to Egypt if you go to Babylon they point out to Egypt even the Hebrews like at some point went back to Egypt um, you know like it's the mother of all mysteries kind of a thing like and I love like mysteries that's like part of like what this exhibit is all about like stuff that I cannot understand and cannot explain and nobody can really so this is kind of like what my artwork is all about um, so Egypt is a big part of it and then uh, another thing that I want to say oh yeah the renaissance thing so I think that now we live in a digital renaissance meaning uh, because we have the power of the internet like I don't have to go to school anymore if I don't want to like if I want to become a plumber I can just watch YouTube videos for like a week and I can probably do it or whatever the trade is you want to learn like I've learned uh, printmaking through like just like YouTube tutorials I've learned like many things that I know how to do on my computer software through YouTube so um, I think that now is the time to kind of like go back into the cycle of like not limiting yourself to one area because now we have the internet so whatever you want to learn whatever you want to do is right there you just need the passion and the drive to do it and then you can do whatever you want really to learn any of those trades and um, so two more points um, the Greeks had this uh, lifestyle that they broke down to four pieces and they call it quadrivium and so they learned grammar they learned um, uh, math they learned uh, music and they learned uh, astronomy so I took that and then uh, I applied it to my own life so um, I create a piece of art every week that's my goal every single week I have a new piece of art and but I break it down into like really small steps for myself because otherwise like it gets like so overwhelming if you like I want to learn another language all the time I want to read a book all the time I want to draw all the time I want to play music all the time but I have to work so I created this lifestyle followed by the model of the Greeks where I dedicate I, I split my my life into five main like categories and those things like are sacred kind of a thing for me so like nothing touches that like my 
my day revolves around that, not like I. It's kind of like being on top of your day rather than being like the day being on top of you. So like I have these five things that I don't let anything touch, and then after that, like I do everything else. So I have five disciplines. So when I wake up, I I have Bible reading. So. Um, if you are not a Christian or if you like are don't practice a religion, I would just say like um, that aspect is kind of like like you can replace it with whatever has like a spiritual aspect for you. But for me, it's Bible reading and prayer. And then the second thing is learning a language. Like I every day study a little bit. I my parents are Mexican, so. I, my uh, Spanish was my first language, and then I went to school here, and then I got certified in French, and right now I'm learning Hebrew. So like, I for like 10 to like 15 minutes um, every day, I just learn or memorize a word or stuff like that, and just little by little, all these disciplines. Like I have music every day. That's Kind of like the easiest one for me, honestly, because every day I just play drums until I want to, basically. <laughs> like, I just go to my office and I just play. And sometimes I'm there for like 10 minutes, but usually it's like a little bit longer. Um, and then every day I try to draw a little bit. It could be a doodle. Sometimes I just get really inspired and I end up like doing stuff like this. But sometimes I'm just like, I have a lot of like, just like really silly drawings, you know, like just a lot of like a snail riding a skateboard, whatever. Like I just love drawing. And then uh, working out, that's the, that's the other aspect that is really important for me because if you have a healthy body, then your mind is gonna work better, you know? If you feel good in your body, like then you have time to start drawing. But if you're sick, you're not gonna be able to play drums to like do all, all these things. So like if you, it's kind of like taking care of your car, like change the oil every once in a while. Otherwise your car is not gonna take you to the places you need to go kind of a thing. I'm not saying like, you know, go intense and become a bodybuilder, but go for a walk. Just do something for your body or just eat healthier. Try to like nurture your body so your brain can like work better. And then the last thing I want to say, let's just talk a little bit about the art here and that's it. So this wall, I already touched on it, but it's my homage to the great builders of the past. So here um, you'll see an architectural rendering and then pair it with uh, the picture of that place that I visited. So you have Notre Dame here, and then the picture of Notre Dame, the Pantheon here, and then the picture of the Pantheon. And then this wall right here is all dedicated to etymology, to research of really uh, just important kind of weird words. Um, so this is a project that um, keeps me stretching my art muscle because I create one of these digital collages every week and I do research of each word every week so what I do is I have tons of images that are copyright free in my hard drive computer I have four terabytes of images upon images of most of them are of the ancient world because that's just what I love um, so you'll see like some Greek motifs, Egyptian motifs, um, anatomy and all of that stuff. But um, that green piece over there that has a skull, that's actually my x-ray scan from my chiropractic. So like I like to have fun with like my artwork. Um, so yeah, all these images are uh, composites of multiple layers of just what I think it looks fun and interesting and then the word um, that I think it's really interesting and the, the word in the middle right there with the head it's matzah and that word I love because it means dough in Hebrew you can see it's spelled down there in Hebrew 
And that word went from the Hebrews to the Arabic people, to the Spanish people, to the Mexicans, and that's how we say dough still in Spanish, masa. So I just love that word because it just went all across the sea and we still use that after like thousands of years. And then in the back, uh, I have all the covers that I've done for the last three albums of my music. Um, so yeah, those are the CD covers and then there's a cassette tape that's limited edition right there um, that I've done for my music. And then there's a QR code if you want to go and look at the website and listen to all the music. Um, and then the Egyptian wall, because I already told you I love Egypt. so. Here's my wife wearing a crocodile on her head on the Nile. Here is the Sphinx, obviously, and here is a retro comic style Anubis that I drew. So I drew the god Anubis, but then I made it look like it's like from the 50s or 60s from a newspaper. And then over there on the hallway, I have a picture called Five Generations because it's my grandma, my mom, my sister, and my niece at my great grandma's house. So four of, uh, generations of women represented in that picture. And then I have um, Plato, Plato's Atlantis, and that's another digital collage that I uh, touching upon, again, uh, ancient uh, civilizations and how Plato talked about it. And then um, actually the pictures behind Plato are uh, pictures of my travel to India and then this is another digital collage I'm oh, sorry this is a, just a normal paper collage shadow box that's called doomsday and if you look closely there are a whole bunch of members of the KKK riding a ferris wheel and yeah I love that because <laughs> it's like so opposite and it's like I have to make it into a collage um, and then upstairs um, I have pictures of the four wonders of the world that I visited. So if you go upstairs and then you go down the hallway, um, you'll see a picture of Chichen Itza, a picture of Machu Picchu, a picture of the Taj Mahal, and a picture of the Colosseum. And then on the opposite side, um, there's a picture of an oyster farm that I took in France, and that actually the Rockefeller Institute of Government like had on display in Albany, and then. Um, there's a picture of the Colossus of Memnon, which is a really famous statue in uh, the ancient capital of Egypt called Thebes. Um, and that piece for me is really important because like in the ancient world, like even like, so the statue broke and at six in the morning for a long time, the wind would come and it would go through the statue and because it was broken in such a way it would create this weird like whistling sound so um a lot of people thought it was an oracle and a lot of roman emperors went to visit that statue in egypt just to ask for they wanted to have a baby whatever they, a lot of people in the ancient world like have visited that statue so it's up there and then there's a picture of a castle in France that's called uh, Saint-Michel and it's just basically this amazing medieval structure like built on quicksand which how wow, that makes no sense that you can build on quicksand so I got to go there and take a picture and still I don't know how they did it the story says that uh, Abby uh, I forgot his name anyway this guy was praying all of a sudden he saw the archangel Michael and said, hey, I want you to build a church here. So this guy by himself <laughs> built this majestic like structure in the middle of quicksand. It's just most of this stuff, like I don't know how to explain it. That's why I go and photograph it. And um, so yeah, uh, I do uh, a lot of like um, print on demand. So like a lot of like those interesting words like this is uh, the name of my project, Lexicophiliac. So uh, I just print on demand, like here's the logo. And then I have some prints of the, uh, some of the places that I photograph and some of the interesting words and some music. And uh, yeah, just feel free to walk around and look at it and 
Do you guys have any questions? Anything you want to say? Yes. Well, sorry, Michelle, like the tides come and go on that, right? Yes. And it is on a mound. It's yeah. Somewhat of a, an island. I've never been there. It's an island. It's, yeah. Yeah. I don't understand. No. But you can only go on low tide. The, yeah. 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 You can only go on low tide, and there's only one bridge, and then here's quicksand, and there's quicksand, yeah. and you just go yeah. straight. And it takes about, I mean, all of the. <laughs> It's a lot of shopping, but if you don't stop, it takes about like an hour to go all the way to the cathedral oh, and, yeah. and it's just so amazing. Like you're up high and there's a statue oh, of gold of like Michael holding a sword at the top of it. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. Any, anything else? Questions? Yeah. How would you uh, respond to uh, how you would consider your DNA, your creative makeup to be, do you have a plan for what, or a, a goal for what you plan to do next versus how much is it, what pops up impulsively? It sounds like impulsive, something just comes up and you pursue it. Yeah, um, well, a lot of it, um, because I have those five disciplines that I keep every day. So sometimes it's just repetition and sometimes I feel pretty dry and I just have to do research for a word. But I have created the guides for me to like walk into creativity. And then eventually all one of these projects gets exciting and then I go more towards that direction. So like, for example, um, these are really exciting to me, so this is the last one that I've done. So now I'm thinking already, like, what's another structure that blows my mind that I want to go over? The, by the way, these are all, like, light box rendition of, it, I call them homages because these are all in books from the past. Like, this is in the, um, this is in the fourth book of architecture by Vitruvius which is a Roman archi architect from the ancient past. Um, so I just uh, scan the page of the book and then put it on the light box and then go over it. So these are my renditions of their architectural drawings. But now I'm thinking like, okay, what's next? Like, do I want to do like maybe Machu Picchu or stuff like that? So. This already has me excited about like what's next, and then the same with music. Okay, I've done so much music, but like I haven't done a song in maybe like three months because I've just been playing like drums every day. Yeah. So now I think it's time to start making a new song and stuff like that, and then drawing like eventually like a doodle would be really funny, so that I like make it into a bigger drawing and stuff like that. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are those in pencil? Uh, uh, mechanical pen. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. I like it because the point, it, like, the tip is really fine, so I can do, like, some of the lines are really, really fine. And yeah. honestly, like, if you look closely at most of my art, you'll see that my lines are kind of squiggly and stuff <laughs> like that. And I think that's, like, that's part of being an artist. I want to be perfect. I will never be perfect because I'm a human. So I just keep pursuing my dream and I'm never gonna achieve it. So that keeps me motivated. Like if you look closely, like I'm such a tweaker. And like my lines are like literally like some of like, look at this one. Like you can see it from far away probably. It's like, ooh, and it's supposed to be lying like straight. So like, it, but it's just what it is. Sometimes I'm like super caffeinated like right now. And it's just what happens, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Speaking of super caffeinated, find there are certain things, maybe certain times of the day, certain seasons where creativity might come a little easier than others? Yes. Um, and I think that's part of the beauty of like having multiple media that I definitely hit a wall. Like, um, for example, I can tell you right now that I don't want to frame anything for the, the next like couple months, honestly, because it's such a task, you know? Yeah. Um, 
you gotta be careful that you set the glass somewhere where it's not dusty and wearing gloves and like stuff like that. So that for sure I don't want to be doing anytime soon. And like when I am on the you know twentieth hour of some of these, I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is awesome, you know. But then I stop and then I I move on to the next project or I go work out and stuff like that. So I think that. That rhythm of having like multiple things is what has helped me a lot. That you you're gonna hit a wall even if like you're reading a really interesting book that you love when you're on page three hundred. Like you'll be like, okay, all right. So I just move into a different thing. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, the title of your show, "Who Are We?" in mm -hmm. French. But I won't try to say that. Uh, have you found answers to that question through your exploration of art, or what have you found? Well, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, it was really easy for me to come up with that name and to, like, basically, I'm marinating all these like topics all the time so like I don't have to like really think about it but yeah long story short there, I don't think there's an answer to that question and that's what keeps me going with my art um, I, I've done a lot of research and um, that got me like looking into Greek mythology like the Vedas of you know India I've done a whole bunch of research in Egypt I can like Tell you so many things about Egypt that most people would even like know about, like just because I love it so much. But the more I go into it, like the more it is a mystery. And when you go and you get confronted by the mystery, then you can turn on History Channel and like you brainwash you and say, "Hey, ancient aliens," or you can turn on like the Catholic Mass and let you brainwash you. You, they're like basically we try to understand this through science, religion, or philosophy, but there's no answer. We don't know. That, like that's the answer. We don't know. And I am a Christian, and I believe in God, and I have faith, and that's just my point of view. But still, with having faith and all of that, I still don't know who built some of these structures. Like. I'll never know until maybe God is like, hey, you know that was a giant or whatever. I don't know. When you, yeah. It's a maybe a question, but more of a comment because mm -hmm. uh, uh, I remember being in your family for a long time. You had a bucket list mm -hmm. of places that you wanted to go to, mm -hmm. and um, and so speak to that bucket list and how that has really created a lot of the art that you do yeah. and starting with i think the first piece first place was egypt mm -hmm. was on your list and when you went to egypt because yeah. that's quite interesting in itself yeah um so going back to history um i just i love learning and memorize and stuff so like when you hear about the seven wonders of the world I immediately like want to learn like where are they and where and how and all that stuff so um, I was taking a class in uh, history Western Civilization one uh, with Dr. Brown in Vega Community College and we went through the seven wonders of the ancient world. So for me, just like doing research about that is mind blowing. And then I just hear that and then I go watch 40 documentaries, I buy 20 books. And then I'm like in the ancient wonders of the world for like a month. Like that's all I think about. And that's all like I hear on the podcast and everything. So anyway, long story short, um, I think out of like all of my travels, uh, I think Egypt was the most like mind blowing, um, and it's like 
Okay, first of all, I would say everyone should travel because it opens your mind to other cultures, to other languages, to other places. If you know more than one language, you know more of your environment because here's an example. In Spanish, we don't have a word for toes. We have to say fingers of the feet. That's what we say in, in Spanish. But in English, there's only one word, toes. So if you know two languages, then you have a wider perspective of the world. And the more languages you know, the more you can understand your environment. So with that said, before I went to Egypt, I, I don't know, I think I have at least 40 books about Egypt, maybe more. And I just like read about it and watch documentaries and stuff. So that is really important in my opinion because here's an example. I went to the island of Elephantine in Egypt, which already like not a lot of people know where it is. There's a temple there that has the description in hieroglyphs, Alexandros, which is when Alexander the Great went to that temple, he was dedicated and they did a great ceremony and blah, blah, blah. So I'm not saying I know how to learn how to uh, read all hieroglyphs, but I know the word Alexandros in hieroglyphs. So when I went to that temple and I saw the hieroglyph of the name of Alexander the Great, for me, that was one of the best moments of my life. I was like almost crying. But for other people who would see a whole bunch of bees and pieces of bread and be like, cool, oh. you know, <laughs> and walk away. So like... The Rosetta Stone, right? Exactly. The Rosetta Stone. Well, the the uh, library Alexander was one of the ancient wonders, right? How many of the, uh, the original are no longer here? Uh, the, well, That's not here. The uh, library wasn't the ancient wonder, it was the lighthouse of Alexander. Okay. That was the actual wonder of the world. The only one standing of the ancient world is uh, the Great Pyramid. Pyramid. Yes, that's the only one standing from the ancient world. There's seven. Yeah, there's seven. So Angkor Wat is a not ancient. <coughs> Which one? Angkor Wat. It is, but it's not part of the seven it's wonders seven of the world. Yeah. But it's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. And like, I don't know who names these, like, because for example, um, the Colosseum is a wonder of the world. Yeah. Um, but uh, the Christ uh, of Brazil is a wonder of the world. I would say there are so many other really impressive structures around the world before the Christ that could be a wonder of the world, just in Italy, you know? But. Yeah, but the top the of that mountain is pretty cool. Yeah, no, I yeah, agree. Real, I just, I just don't know <laughs> who names these, yeah. and, you know. But it's cool. The person they got the picture of the mm-hmm. I think when it came. Oh, all the yeah, right. Yeah, right. 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 It was like a one in a million. Yeah. Oh, that's so, exactly. I think I just want to end by saying thank you to everyone here, oh. and thank you to all my teachers that have put uh, some effort and time into my life and there's so many to remember but Tom and Salako, Lacey McKinney, um, Liz Brownell, uh, David Ditzel, uh, Dr. Brown, I mean there's so many like I I really believe that if you find a good teacher like that's priceless so yeah thanks for coming. And-